Hello, people. How you guys doing today? A Friday already. I can't believe it's another Sabbath coming already. Already, already. Um, I'm here to do a video, and I've been trying to get it organized, but I'm going to be going through a lot of things today, pretty much. Might be another hour video, but I want to come talk about, uh, before I get this choir in front of me to sing this song, I'll hold his hand, because we're in the end at the end, and I didn't even pull up my declaimer, so I need to go do that now. Um, but um, we need to be understanding how important it is to hold on to his hand right now, to hold on to Messiah right now, because so much is going on, and we need to know that have the, as I talked to you before about the Roman Catholic Church, uh, is pushing uh, to make a one world order, new world order, one world religion. And so I'm going to be talking about Leland Jones' video today. You know, Leland Jones, I listen to him all the time. But this particular video, he's talking about Kenyon West and uh, some prophetic things. So I want to share it with you guys. It's about 20 minutes long. Um, and then I know Carrie Geddon had a vision about the tribes again. Uh, over in uh, the Bantu tribes and things. And I'm not going to be able to play the whole video, but I'm just going to do an intro of her video. And you can go and listen to it at your own time because I got to cover too many other things today. And I want to cover Leland Jones' video. going to take up time. And then I also want to get through uh, to uh, the Bible, which I'm going to be reading Isaiah 64th chapter and so uh, that's why I'm going to just go through some brief things for you to look at later. And then also I'm looking at my tablet here. I'm um, going to be covering um, some things coming from Missions Field. Bob Barbara uh, got a new little short video out about the offerings going on over in Kenya. So I'm going to be sharing that. And also I have a new baby to share. Uh, William had a new baby. William and his wife had a new baby. And I'll be showing that. Uh, and later on, also, as I get to the end of the video, uh, along with uh, Bob Barra's mission report as well. So uh, that's why, you know, I have a few things to cover. So I just want to get over here to the uh, news real quick. We have some earthquakes going on, uh, Mary Greeley. Uh, and then we also going to be just talking about... Um, uh, I think it was somebody else I was talking about. But anyway, let's look at the declaimer here. The news and views and opinions shared in some of the videos created by uh, my husband and myself and Fill My Cup Ministries do not necessarily represent the views and opinions or beliefs of myself and my husband and Fill My Cup Ministries. Okay, uh, so we know we are using the, uh, most of the videos I use this copyrighted material. It's coming from the section uh, 107 of the U.S. Copyright Act of 1976. So we mostly use in, uh, people, other people materials uh, for educational purposes and comments and news reporting and things of this nature so I just want people to know uh, I uh, do not have no intention of stealing people material I wish that sometime the copyright people would be more genuine uh, genuine genuine because I've been wanting to play some more music on here if you know good music that you want to share with me you can send it to me if you have music out there that you want to share, I'll be glad to share it on my video. If it's something I agree with and something that's uplifting and encouraging. Because uh, a lot of people have, I, I, I know like one guy, Paul Weber, uh, a lot of few people out there, a lady named Sarah Lieben, Lieberman. All these guys all have wonderful music, but I can't never get their permission to use it. And I don't even use YouTube videos unless I get permission most of the time, especially dealing with music. So uh, anyway, that's how that go. But I'm going to go and play this choir because I did get permission from them to play their music. Uh, I'll share it on my channel, whatever. I, they wrote me, in and, uh, wrote me one night on a chat and told me I could uh, do that. So that's fine. So let me go ahead now and uh, go on over here to um, the things going on for the day. Uh, and get on with to this this nice music here and then I'm gonna get over into the news okay so let me go ahead and mute this out uh, hold on a second. I want to the hand of my savior and friend he shields me from evil till dangers or end. He'll take me to heaven where voices now blend. I hold to the hand of my Lord. I hold, I hold, I hold to the to the sky hand of my Savior, oh my dear Lord, Lord Savior and King. Till still I am safe in the sea that land home to where. Praises now sing, never healing, so gently alone, where 
clouds arise, He spits and the shadows roll back from the skies. Tis wonderful glory for our human eyes. I hold to the hand of my Lord. I Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, Mammoth Mountain Volcano, another sign of recharging for a coming eruption one day, had a magnitude 4.0 earthquake. It was about 8 miles west of Tom's Place, California, or 13 kilometers. 160 people reported feeling this earthquake, and normally only about 10% of people report earthquakes. The Moment Tensor Ball. You can see here we have uplift. The initial first wave of the earthquake came from the northwest a little bit. Tension was applied. Going northeast, we got dipping of the fault line slightly. You can see that here going oh, down, of course, dipping. And then towards the east a little bit. Basically, mostly towards the south. Since this magnitude 4.0 earthquake, there's been a 0 0.8, a 1.6, a 1.4, a 1.5, and a 1.2. Using Google Earth, 
right down here, kind of in the middle at the bottom, is the 4.0. Up here we got Mammoth Lakes, etc. Uh, Crowley Lake. These are different earthquakes that I recorded in the past. Uh, this 3.0, um, that was back on September 25th. I also have on here different eruptions. Um, these basically all occurred at the same time. They were one of the most recent eruptions. And then further up north, we have the Mono Inyo craters. And according to research, they have eruptions along this chain every two to seven hundred years. And they really emphasize that you have nothing to worry about. Here on USGS, we have the location of some of these more recent earthquakes, the 1.4 the 1.2, 1.5, and the 1.6. The upper earthquakes, the shallow earthquakes as they call them, example the 1.1 is the result because the crust of the earth is very brittle from the uplift from the recharging of this volcano. Here's a waveform of that earthquake. Yeah, you can see that it lasted quite a while. They believe that the CO2 that comes up in this area is from an areas of dike intrusion actually hasn't broken through to the surface like what we've seen in Hawaii. And the magma comes up very deep from the earth. One research paper which Google has an image here of shows the different directions that the uh, magma rises up from and yeah, I don't think you can see that, how deep that is. Yeah, shallow earthquakes, uh, brittle um, ductile transition, and the intrusion as it comes in. This is a paper from Science Advances showing deep fluid pathways beneath Mammoth Mountain. Hello, I'm Jonathan Hassan, the Editor-in-Chief of TV7 Israel, and I would like to personally invite you to join us for our bi-weekly Jerusalem Studio programs for a better in-depth understanding of Israel and its region. Shalom and welcome to the last Jerusalem Studio episode before we break for this season's holidays. As the year 2019 draws to a close, it is high time to look back and survey its landscape. What was accomplished? What fell short? What can one expect from the year ahead? To recapture the main events surrounding Israel in 2019, we're joined here in the studio by Dr. Eran Lerman, who is the Vice President of the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security and a lecturer at Shalom College. Welcome. I'd like also to welcome our TV7 analyst, Mr. Amir Oren. And Mr. Oren, I'd like to start with uh, a question to you. Uh, the main challenge Israel faced during 2019 obviously pertains to the deadlock in Jerusalem, uh, which has been ongoing for quite some time now. Uh, we are faced uh, soon in March uh, with uh, uh, a third round of election, unprecedented, uh, of course. Uh, take it away. Well, even if across the globe it was neither uh, a year of uh, marvels or miracles, uh, nor a year of horrors, it was just another year, perhaps, uh, down the slippery slope of uh, mankind. Or, uh, alternatively, uh, if one sees progress everywhere. In Israel, it was a unique year because of what you refer to. Never in Israel's history 
has uh, a prime minister designate uh, failed to form a government uh, following an election? And this year, uh, it happened twice in a row. And so Israel has been under a caretaker government for a year now, and will do so for at least another quarter until, um, you mentioned March, if we have uh, a government by April, it uh, will be uh, a reason uh, for uh, joy in Israel. Rejoice, as Margaret Thatcher uh, said. Indeed. Now, uh, the, the political crisis uh, has to do with the uh, formation of two blocks in Israeli politics. One centers around Likud as uh, what used to be the biggest party. It is no longer so. It is the second biggest. But nevertheless, it has satellites around it um, of uh, right-wing and religious parties, which are smaller, but uh, they uh, each have um, a group of adherents, which almost never, never wavers. You can predict that they will have their seven, eight, nine seats in the 120-seat Knesset. And if they stick by Likud and the other side has its own galaxy around, this time, blue and white, then um, it goes to uh, whoever tips the balance. It used to be a Avigdor Lieberman, but he never um, uh, made any use of his power to, uh, to, to choose which of the uh, two uh, will uh, get uh, the uh, mantle of leadership. And so here we are. Indeed. Dr. Lehrman, I'd like to take a, a regional angle to Jerusalem's political deadlock. Uh, we uh, saw, of course, uh, one of the main challenges was uh, the Trump administration's anticipated uh, uh, so-called deal of the century, uh, which uh, was supposed to be unveiled after the first round of election. Uh, but each round, of course, uh, delayed it further and further. Uh, a second one is, of course, on the regional uh, angle. Uh, Jordan has uh, had some uh, challenges with Israel. The political deadlock in Jerusalem was, uh, of course, uh, uh, used in order to uh, advance certain things. Turkey, with uh, regard to the uh, pipeline that Israel wants to erect uh, uh, from uh, uh, Israel to uh, Europe, something that it is also waiting to negotiate with Israel over uh, once uh, uh, government forms in Jerusalem and more and more challenges in this region. Well, um, on the last point, I would very quickly argue that no Yes, people, uh, I'm not going to play all this. Uh, this is this uh, studio recap of what's gone on, what went on in 2019. And you could go on and uh, look at it. I will post it in the description box. But I'm going to get over to Leland Jones right now because it's going to cover another 20 minutes. And then I'm going to get over to the missions at the end. So let me go ahead and pull up Leland Jones. And I really hope you take notes and listen to this one. And then Kerry Giddin is talking a little bit about the tribes, but I'm not going to play all of that as well. I will play a very little bit of it, and you can go and listen to those things later. But I just wanted to let you know it's here, the information, and I'm just passing it on, okay? So uh, let me go ahead and mute out again and get over to Leland Jones, okay? But the details are many. So from the title of the video, you can already see what we're going to talk about. But the details are many, and I really have to ask you to be patient with this video. Um, I have so many things to try to bring together, and it's very challenging for me to, you know, explain the same things over and over in time. But many of you have seen these recent developments around around Kanye West you know is this is this a sincere conversion to Jesus Christ etc and you know of course on this channel my audience is not really asking this question but in watching what was going on with Kanye West and him supporting Donald Trump and him with this album Jesus is King and this play, Nebuchadnezzar, I began to realize 
He's a major player in the worship in, of the image of the beast. And we want to explain that to you in this video. However, we're going through a lot of scriptures. So like I said, please be patient. We're going to work through it. We're going to connect many dots together. Now, in the title of the video, you can see we're talking about Christmas and Hanukkah. Now, Christmas is certainly a pagan holiday. I hope that those of you watching this are not celebrating Christmas, okay? Because we're going to see what it means from the scripture. Christmas is pagan and it is to getting you to bow and worship the beast of Revelation, okay? And we're going to prove that to you through the scriptures. We're also going to prove to you what Kanye West is doing. Okay? So, first and foremost, the time of this recording, we are on the Enoch calendar. On the Enoch calendar, it is the 10th day of the 10th month. And it's a significant day because we can find it right in Jeremiah 52. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign. And we're explaining to you, this is the ninth year of 14. In the tenth day of the tenth month, that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came, he and his army, around Jerusalem. So on this precise date, the tenth day of the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar is beginning his siege of Jerusalem. Now, let us now talk about um, what Kanye West is doing. Okay. In other videos, we're gonna, we have other videos that cover this, so we're going to just mention it briefly. We know that when Israel is formed in a nation in 1948, there's a prophecy that says, the harlot will sing after 70 years. After 70 years, that would have brought us to 2018. So in 2018, the, the prophecy says, the harlot will sing. Okay? And that's why we have Kanye West on the scene. He is representing the music of getting the people to bow and worship the false Jesus. Okay? So, this music is a type of chatter we can see in Daniel chapter 3, but it's also in Revelation. In Revelation, thus, with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down. No more the voice of the harpers, the musicians, and the pipers shall not be heard. Okay? And the trumpeters. And, and the trumpets were explaining that this is the time of the trumpeters. Okay? Of Revelation. And, and they shall be heard no more in you. So what is this? What are these musicians? Who are these harpers? Um, who are these musicians? Who are these trumpeters? Well, the way we understand this prophecy is through Nebuchadnezzar. Now, we explained to you before how Isaiah, chapter 23, talks about the harlot will sing after 70 years. Well, there's also a prophecy related to Nebuchadnezzar in 70 years. In Jeremiah 25, verse 9, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant, will bring them again against this land and the heavens there and against the nations around about shall they destroy them. Make an astonishment and a hissing. A hissing is also like whistling. It's an instrument as well. Moreover, I will take uh, from them the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstone and the light of the candle. In this whole land shall be a desolation and astonishment and these nations shall serve Babylon 70 years. So again, we got this prophecy, 70 years from the time Israel as far as a nation. We have this singing. Okay? And that's what we could see in Revelation 18. The voice of the bridegroom. The voice of the bride. Okay? So, we are in a time when the, the harlot is singing. Now, what is the harlot singing? What is the harlot doing? What is Kanye West doing? Okay. Well, what he is doing is getting people to worship the image of the beast. 
Now, when you say the image of the beast, what we're talking about is we're talking about the beast of Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 describes this beast rising up from the sea. And Nebuchadnezzar, the same one we talked about, had a dream, okay? And in his dream, he, he saw various characteristics, and Daniel interpreted the dream. And then, after the dream, he saw, in the dream, he saw a statue, and he decided to make a statue of himself. And when he did, the statue was 60 cubits high. It was six cubits wide. So the people had to bow and worship the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Well, the way that the, they were signaled to bow and worship was music. Okay? Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. And at that time, okay, so we're, now you can see after the seven years, we're in that time. You hear the sound of the horn, of the flute, of the harp, of the sackbut, of the psaltery, and of the dulcimer, in all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king set up. Whosoever does not fall down to worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Okay. If you went to Sunday school, you know the story of the uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego cast into the furnace, right? So you hear, what do we have? We have this music that's going, this music that is playing. And we have this statue. Now there's significance to this statue. There's significance to the measurements of this statue, okay? So the statue is 60 cubits high. 60 cubits has, um, with a sacred cubit, has 25.2 inches in a cubit. If you multiply that by 60, you come up with 1,512 um, inches. Well, those are days. So, from the, the sign of the woman clothed with the sun, September 22nd, 2017, when you count those days, Okay, you come to the abomination that makes desolate in the temple. Okay, and there are six cubits in its width. Well, six times 25.2 is 151. What is that? It's five months according to the Enoch calendar. Now, where do we find those? Five months. We find them in Revelation chapter 9. And the fifth angel sounded his trumpet. And I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth, and to him was given a key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose out of the smoke of the pit the smoke of a great furnace. Remember, we saw the furnace in Daniel chapter 3. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. At the time of this recording, just yesterday, there was a solar eclipse over uh, many parts of Asia. Full solar eclipse, what is that? It is the moon cast being going in front of the sun, the sun being darkened. So that solar eclipse is what it's talking about here in Revelation 9.1. Okay, and then what came out of the pit, the pit? Locusts. And those locusts had a sting that they would sting a man and they would, the sting would last five months. Again, five months is how many days in the Enoch calendar? 151. The same six cubits of the statue. So if we measure the statue, it gives us days. Okay, so we have five months. And we have 1,512 days, okay? I will place links in the description field for more information on those calculations. For time's sake, we're not going to continue. Now, let's go back to Daniel chapter 3. 
So you had the music playing, right? Well, what was going on there? Well, Nebuchadnezzar had a dedication. Dedication, when we read that in the English translation, in the Hebrew word for that word dedication is Hanukkah. Hanukkah means to dedicate. Okay? So Hanukkah is a, is a, is a feast, is a time of the year. We know what time of the year that is. Okay? So the beast is playing this music in this particular time of the year. What season? Hanukkah. So we have many markers of this indication. We have a solar eclipse that just took place yesterday. Okay? We have this music from Kanye West. So then what did he do? So he has this album, Jesus is King. Okay? He has this play. He had the play come out on November 24th. November 24th was just a couple weeks ahead of Hanukkah. And what was the name of the play? Nebuchadnezzar. What is this guy doing? Why would he have a play called Nebuchadnezzar? Okay? Why would he have this music, all right, this play, this musical, Nebuchadnezzar, around the Feast of Hanukkah, guys? Wow. And then he has another album called Jesus is Born. And he released that on Christmas. Well, it's my hope that you realize that, you know, things that the celebrities do and everything, many of them are worshiping Satan, okay? Now, just because someone says they had a conversion, um, but they maintain their kind of celebrity status and everything, keep in mind, Kanye West was just calling himself God a couple years ago. He was calling himself Jesus, the Messiah. He's got albums and everything with himself with a crown of thorns. Um, I, I believe it's Jesus. Uh, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it. He came out with some guys. I don't listen to him. I all the things I'm talking about Kanye West. I don't know a single song. I can't tell you what the play. I don't watch it. The only thing I heard that got my attention. I'm like, oh, this is big. Kanye West went to Joel Osteen's church, okay, and he's bragging how he's the greatest artist of all time, and he says. I'm the greatest artist of all time, and now I'm working for him. Well, who is him? Just because someone says God, you know, that doesn't mean it's the same God as you, what you believe. If you have sincere salvation in Jesus Christ and you did all kinds of evil and wicked things, you have to repent. You can't just say you're God and, and not repent. Kanye West never repented of all the crazy things he said, all his albums, all his blasphemous statements. He's just like, no, it's all good. Now I'm just serving God. Well, who? Guys, he's serving Satan. He's getting the people to bow to a false image of Jesus Christ. That's what all this is, okay? Now, this is dreadful stuff. But Hanukkah. Now, you ever want to ask yourself, why are there 12 days? Why are there 12 days of Christmas? My true love gave to me 12 days of Christmas, right? Guys, that's Hanukkah. When Moses built the altar, okay, there was a, a dedication of the vessels of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel each took vessels, a platter, a bowl, and a spoon, and they presented it to Moses, okay? And each tribe did that on a single day. So there were 12 days. So guys, the, the enemy has counterfeited everything. <coughs> so Christmas is a complete counterfeit. There's no indication of when Jesus was born. I mean, you can come up with a, you know, a feast day or something like that. Fact of the matter, Scripture doesn't say you don't know. Okay? So, you know, do your research on Christmas. As you guys already know, that's not the point of this video. But... There's a false image. What is it? A Christmas tree. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man, I'm about to bust you people up. All right. Let's go to Revelation 15, 2. Now, these are the overcomers in Revelation 15. 
And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass, mingled with fire, and those that had gotten the victory, or were overcomers, Nikio, over the beast, okay, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name. So these are the people that got victory over the beast, right? Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And what do they do? They stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Okay, so they're standing on the sea of glass in heaven with the harps of God, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and they sing the song of the Lamb. Now, the scripture records what they sing. Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? O King of the nations, for unto you does it pertain, insomuch as there... Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm reading the... I'm getting ahead of myself. For only... Uh, for you only are holy, and all the nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments are made manifest. So this is the words of the song that they sing on the sea of glass with the harps of God. Now, this song, in the words that we could just see, we can find in Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, we have the same words of this song. For insomuch as there is none like you, O Lord, you are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O king of the nations? For to thee it does pertain, for insomuch as among all the wise men of the nations and all the kingdoms there is none like thee. So we have the same song being sung in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 6 and 7. Now if we go back to chapter 4, where the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails, with hammers that it move not. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. This is a Christmas tree. This is talking about Christmas right here in Jeremiah 10. Now, the people that don't celebrate Christmas, the people that overcome the beast, Okay, the people that recognize the paganism in the apostate church and Christianity, they're given these harps. They're on the sea of glass. And they sing the same song we can find in Jeremiah 10 where we see the Christmas tree. So yes, the Christmas tree is the thing that gets the people bow and worship the beast. Okay, look, the image of the beast is not just one thing. Yes, it's a statue. Okay. It's Santa, you know, it's Baal, it's false gods, right? And that's what, that's what this is. That's what's going down, guys. So I'm just saying this is the truth. Those that you have overcomers, you rejoice in this message. Those that don't, you hate me. <laughs> you hate hearing this. So uh, Kanye West is, is now a major player on the scene to get the people to bow and worship the beast. Worship the image, just like the instruments we could see, the harps, the trumpets, the pipers, okay, and the harlot after 70 years. So guys, that's what's going down right now. It is the time of the trumpets, the fifth trumpet. We've shown you that by the things related to the 70 nations, okay, and the, the things we saw in Jerusalem. And this year, we are watching for something to happen on Hanukkah, okay, at this feast time, and it's Kanye West. He is the player on the scene. He is the one getting the people worship false image, going to Joel Osteen's church. And now, let's watch him. You know, he and Joel Osteen are going to hold a concert the same day as Pope Francis is signing the education day okay so we, we we told you about that before the unrighteous decree that it talks about in Isaiah chapter 10 so the same day the Pope's getting the nations to sign the unrighteous decree Kanye West and Joel Osteen are holding a concert okay why getting the people to bow to worship the image 
of the beast. So Pope Francis, the false prophet, guys, Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. These are exciting times. But the locusts, they are going forth. Now, they can't touch those with the seal of God in their forehead. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's 144,000. So we got links, playlists, all this stuff, guys. This is part of our playlist on Mystery Babylon. Okay, we, we told you about Trump. Okay, we told you all the things he's doing. He's acting like a King Nebuchadnezzar. And he's got to have a musician. He's got to have someone to play the music. And he's got Kanye West supporting Trump and Kanye West getting the people to bow to the image. So this is part of a playlist called Mystery Babylon. I encourage you to watch it. Watch all the videos. Some of you guys have seen some of this stuff. Okay. The, um, the animal sacrifice. This is all part of the system. Part of what the beast is doing. But praise to the Most High. We're living in the marvelous times. Okay. We don't have to be afraid because they cannot touch us. Now look. They're about to throw us in the furnace. <laughs> you can see the furnace. They're about to try and kill us, man. But if they do, praise be to his name. We get to reign with him, as it says in Revelation 20. So, guys, thanks for watching. Please watch the playlist on Mystery Babylon. Um, catch up on a lot of those videos. Uh, I've been telling you for years, come out of her, my people, that you receive not of her plagues. So, thanks for watching. Okay, I got to pause here. <laughs> You know, he mentioned, uh, he mentioned uh, Nebuchadnezzar. You know, I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, don't want to play that. <laughs> thought it was interesting because I told you guys on, if you go and look at Will America Ever Be Great Again, if you went and looked at Will America Ever Be Great Again, you will see that Charles Whelan is also talking about the head of gold and uh, Trump representing Nebuchadnezzar in a sense, biblically. Uh, and I'm surprised that Leland Jones is saying the same thing. Uh, but that's why we need to pray and uh, come together and in the body and really learn from each other. Like I said, all God's people have gifts and we have to learn from each other. Uh, but I thought it was interesting, his video, so that's why I shared it with you today. So now I'm going to go here and look at this video, a very little bit of this, okay? I don't have time. I love Carrie Ann getting so much, but I don't have time to go through her whole video today because I want to get to the other, um, the Bible and also the missions that I have. We got a new baby, and I didn't even get the baby's name. I got to go back and ask William what his baby name and how many pounds uh, he weighed when he was born, but I will show you the pictures here in a minute, in a bit. Uh, but um, let me go ahead and let you listen to Carrie and get in a little bit. Um, but yeah, we watching everything, people. We got to be watching, watching, watching. And God is bringing all the tribes, getting all his tribes together. And like I tell people all the time, I don't care what tribe you come from. We all must be born again. We all must be born again of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Not the white Jesus, not this... Uh, a uh, pagan Jesus that come from the Roman Catholic Church, but we need to know who the real Messiah is, people. It's time to wake up now. So let me go ahead and just show you, um, read, uh, let, let me mute this out and go on to the other video here. Hi, guys. This is your sister, Karen Gidden in Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I want to come to you with a very... I'm going to say a very powerful vision that the Lord gave me on the 15th of December, 2019. And when I came out of this vision, all I could say is, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, again, you know, for this history. So I'm going to jump straight into the vision. In this vision, brothers and sisters, I found myself at a place i don't know where i was at the time okay i know where i am i'm gonna tell you where i am but the time when i was looking i wasn't sure where i was and as i was looking i was above the trees so i was suspended just above the trees and i saw this road this very 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 long road as long as my eyes could take me and this road 
was made out of clay it wasn't tarmac like what we've got in europe or anything like that you know um it was it was just pure browny red clay uh on this ground and as i began to look <clears throat> because it was clay sorry i thought to myself oh i must be in jamaica somewhere somewhere in the caribbean because side note when i was a little girl growing up uh in jamaica we have where i lived we had loads of clay and we used to play in the clay and brothers and sisters you know now in 2019 and before <laughs> some people we just don't know what we have because when I used to play in this clay, brothers and sisters, when I was little, uh, with my friends and my brothers and all of that, and we used to play in this clay, mud all over us. When we wash, when we go to have our baths and shower, and we wash ourselves off from this mud, oh, brothers and sisters, I am telling you, our skin was glistening. Like it was so smooth. It was so beautiful from this mud clay, but we didn't know what it was, you know. Our parents used to say, don't play in the mud, don't play in the mud, look at your clothes, they're so dirty and all of that. But we did not know the beauty of the clay. Now in these shops, when I go into these supermarkets and I see facial clay, mud bath, clay for your eyes uh, to help with baggage, clay for your skin, and I just thought, oh my word, this is what we had well in Jamaica. This is what we had in Jamaica. Clay, proper, authentic, natural soil clay that we used to play with, that I used to play with as a child. And, and when I played it, as I said, my skin was beautiful. You wash it off and it was just so clean, glistening and shiny. But that just took me back in the vision <clears throat> when I saw this long road, beautiful clay. And as I began to look, I realized I was not in Jamaica or the Caribbean. So I began to question and I said, Lord, because I was by myself and I, um, there was somebody there with me, but um, I began to question <clears throat> and I said, Lord, where am I? And God began to speak. The Holy Spirit, the Ruah, the set-apart spirit, began to speak. And he said, you are in Congo, Africa. And I was like, Oof, okay, right? So I began to observe. Just began to observe. And as I was observing this long road, my eyes just began to come down closer and closer and closer and closer. Then I began to hear sounds, people speaking. And I'm thinking, where is this sound coming from? And I heard chairs like, yeah, clapping, cheering, just this joyous noise, fireworks going off, brothers and sisters. So I began, I'm thinking, what in the world, what celebration is this? So fireworks begin to go off. And people were just celebrating. They were clapping. They were hugging each other. Because my eyes now was on these people. Brothers and sisters, when I look with the Holy Spirit, brought my eyes. And I began to look. And I saw the reason why these people were celebrating. They were celebrating, man. They have dug. I saw the clay dugged up. And when the Holy Spirit showed me, brothers and sisters, it was pure, solid gold. These people found in, in Congo, Africa, in Congo, Africa, in the vision, these people found a pot of gold, like a field filled with gold. There was, yeah, you would celebrate, wouldn't you, if you find a, a field filled with gold? And they were celebrating. And when I looked, I saw, and this is nothing to do with racism. So please do not come and say I'm racist. Because I'm just giving the vision as it is. I'm not making stories up. I saw Indians, men and women, celebrating. 
I saw Chinese men and women celebrating and I saw white people, men and women celebrating for the gold that, they're, that they found in Congo. I began to question God and I said, Lord, okay, I'm confused. I'm in Congo, Africa. These people have found a pot of gold. Where are the Congolese? Where are the black people? Where are they? Because they're not there. They wasn't there. They, didn't, they did not find in the gold. These other nations dug, came in the country, dug it up, and they found the gold. Brothers and sisters, when I began to question God about this, in line, this is what I saw in line. I saw, uh, not the word, but I saw the earth and it began to shake like a huge earthquake. Then beside that, I saw tsunami. I saw the sea rising. Then I saw like hurricanes and all sorts. So those are the three main things that I saw. And I also saw war, saw men with guns, like soldiers with guns, which I know these are, this is war. So this is when I began to ask the Holy Spirit. I said, where are the Congolese people? Where are the, where are the Congo people to celebrate in the goal? Because they weren't there. And that's when the Lord just showed me all these disasters lined up. And he began to speak and he said, I am going to punish the nations with these disasters that, that I saw in the vision. And brothers and sisters, in my spirit, I can tell you that God was not happy. He was not happy that these nations went into Africa and found the gold for themselves. He wasn't happy. I can tell you that for a fact because it was very it, it impressed that on my heart not to the full extent obviously i'm not i will never ever the lord will never ever uh impress all his anger on his children he won't do that but what he will do he'll let you uh taste a little bit of how he feels okay he will let you taste a little bit of how he feels and i am telling you that the lord was not happy with what was going on in congo now when I came out the vision, obviously there are stories, you know, we can't deny this, all right? There are stories that other nations went into Africa and found gold. They even made a movie in Hollywood about it, blood diamonds and this and that and what a view. So we know that it's truth that they, these other nations goes into Africa and rape the country and take what, what is not theirs. But in this vision, I think it could be recent. The reason why I say that, because of the fireworks. Because I don't know if in ancient time they had fireworks. You know, I'm not sure. But it could be recent or it could be gold. There is gold in Congo, somewhere in Congo, that these other nations may know about. And they're planning to go down there to get it for themselves and leave the poor Congolese people to to struggle and this is what the Lord is upset about because it's theft it's not it is theft it's not your country you shouldn't be going down to dig up that is not yours and this is why I saw the earthquake the tsunami the hurricane the war lined up for these nations that I've talked about brothers and sisters I am telling you I am telling you what the Lord showed me here feeding my sheep today i just want to thank everybody who has supported the purchasing of new beds for the orphans in kenya and here you can see all the orphans who received new beds so the complete bed cost a hundred dollars everything start to finish and so far we have raised about fifteen hundred dollars for all these new beds and we are still unfortunately $2,500 shy of hitting the goal of getting every single orphan at this orphanage 
a bed of his or her own. So everybody, if you could please consider helping. If you give $100, that will supply the orphan with the frame, the mattress, the pillow, sheets, blanket, everything. And outside of this orphanage, there are other orphanages that need beds as well. So those of you who possibly want to supply orphans beds throughout the year, please consider joining our Feed My Sheep Today monthly sustainer family. And you can become a part of the monthly bed program for an orphan. And for $100 a month, you will be doing just that, providing an orphan who sleeps on a cold floor with no blanket, where they huddle up into groups and try to stay warm, you can begin to supply them all with a whole bed, the whole works, for just $100 a month. So if you would please consider doing that, that would absolutely just be incredible. Incredible, incredible, if somebody can do that. Or if you can't do monthly, perhaps maybe once every three months, quarterly, just provide a bed. So we appreciate so much all the help that you have all given us. And I believe there's somebody out there that will be able to meet the needs of these orphans somehow, some way. Like I said, we got to raise another $2,500. So go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. And please consider helping these orphans receive a bed. Something that a lot of us just take for granted here. So thank you all so much for all your support. With this, with the free Bibles and everything, you people are the greatest people. You're such great supporters, and I know there's some of you out there that have never supported before and you're thinking about it. This might be a great time to get started. You can make a difference for these children here. And those of you who have children who or who know of children, can you imagine forcing them to sleep on a cold concrete floor all night without a blanket? Would you do something like that? Of course not. So why should these children sleep under such conditions as well when you can make a difference so here is how you can help just go to our website it's www.feedmysheeptoday.org just click the link in the description box below It'll take you there there you'll see some options to give you can give by paypal you can give by credit card bank draft or just send money in the mail and if you want to join our Feed My Sheep Today monthly sustainer family, that link will be there as well. And provide a bed to a child once a month for just $100. We need so many of you people here right now. Please consider helping a child on a monthly basis. And just come on board and make a difference in God's kingdom and in a child's life. All these children, much more could operate through their day a whole lot better if they just had a comfortable and warm place to sleep for eight hours a day and you can make that happen right now or ignore the fact the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart you could just ignore this message enjoy the pictures and continue with your day like 99% of our subscribers normally do Unfortunately. And like the Bible says in James 1.27, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You can take money and you can fly to Kenya and you can buy beds and do all that stuff. Or you could just give right here and achieve the exact same thing in our Father's eyes. By doing this, you will be visiting the orphans because of your support. Just think about that. I know none of us can make it out there, but we can still visit them through our support. So, this is here for you. Please consider giving. They need your help. So thank you so much for all your support. We love you all. They love you all. God bless you all. Okay, yes, I'm going to uh, just... Uh, I don't know if you know that. Oh, don't, don't, don't. I don't know why things just pop on here like that. I'm sorry about that, guys. 
Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Bible now. And before I go to the Bible, I wanted to show these beautiful pictures here uh, of uh, my brother there. Uh, his wife, uh, this is William Nagobi and his wife Irene. And they just had a wonderful, wonderful, uh, beautiful uh, baby boy. She's in the hospital now. They're still trying to need, uh, they need uh, uh, um, funds right now to try to pay some of the hospital bill. So I just thought I would show it on the screen and let you guys know if you have it in your heart and you want to contribute to Fill My Cup Ministries to help uh, William with that, that's fine. But let the Lord lead you, okay, guys, okay? Because I know I've been uh, telling you guys we've been supporting the homeless this year in my area. But this is like a special thing that just had the baby. I don't even know how many pounds the baby wear. I don't even know his name. So I got to go talk to William. He just put it on here, the screen, when I was doing the video today. Uh, just about ready to do the video. And he said, Minor, Minor, we had the baby. So uh, I'm so happy to share the beautiful boy. He's such a beautiful looking, healthy boy there. Uh, looking, got his daddy eyes, I know. Uh, so uh, I just, I'm just so happy that they had this because she had a struggle with this before. Uh, she had a miscarriage, I think, her first trial out to have a baby, and so uh, we are blessing. We are it's a blessing to have a new addition to the family. I was telling him, you got a new companion now. You can travel with when you go on your mission trips and things. So uh, just be praying for them to get the funds they need and to be able to uh, be healthy and uh, the baby to be healthy. Uh, I'm really so happy about it because I know he told me it was going to happen in December. So uh, she's pretty much right on time having him. So that's really wonderful. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And then um, uh, the beautiful couple that just had the wonderful baby. And then I'm going to get over here now to the Bible. Because my time is running out here. And I want to go here to the Bible and um, Go over Isaiah 64. Let me see how long it is. I don't think it's that long. No, it's not that long. It's only 12 uh, verses here. So it kind of fit right in with my video today because I didn't want it to be too overly long here. But uh, Isaiah 64 is, is a wonderful uh, chapter where it talks about, uh, it talks about uh, we need to be getting our acts together. It's pretty much what it's saying. And I'm going to be reading it from the King James, uh, King James, uh, New King James Version. I'm sorry. Uh, but we need to be getting our acts together, people. And I, I am going to come back and share 65 as well. But I'm going to do just Isaiah 64 today. Father, be it me as I read your word. We thank you so much for this video. I thank you for all the uh, messengers and all the messengers you're giving your people. And uh, we know we need to be getting ready for your soon coming. Uh, as Leland Jones just said, we are getting ready for the slaughter. We're getting ready for the persecutions and the judgments. Uh, because, you know, after we have all these things, the testing time, it's a testing time coming before us right now, Father, very, very soon. So we need to be getting ready, getting ready, getting the sins out of our life. As we know, we are approaching Passover the next three months or so. And so we need to be getting the sin, the leaven out of our lives. Hallelujah. So we just ask that you help us, Father, to get ready, to get ready, to get ready. So fill me with your Holy Spirit as I read your word here from Isaiah 64. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. As fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things for which we did not look, you came down. The mountains shook at your presence. You heard what Carrie Giddon just said. It's going to shake. We're going to have earthquakes and we're going to have tsunamis. We're going to have all kind of disasters coming because Father is trying to wake us up and the people are not treating people right. You know, so many Christians out there are stealing, lying, cheating. And you know, I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday about that. Why can't we just be honest in little things? We have to, you know, you sure will not graduate you until you are honest in little things. And why do we have to lie and cheat and just pretend and fake out all the time? Why is the body of Christ doing these things? But the Father is not happy with it, people. So he said the mountains shook, the mountains shook at his presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God beside 
beside you who acts for the one who waits for him. So we need to be waiting for him, getting ready for him. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you and your ways. You are indeed angry for we have sinned. In these ways, we continue and we need to be saved. We need to be saved, people. That's the key point here. We need to be saved today. But we are like, but we are all like an unclean thing. Hallelujah. We are like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away, taken us away. And there is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. And you feel like God is not answering you today. You feel like he's not present with you today. You feel like you just feel lost. Uh, you feel like you just don't know what to do with your life. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. Oh, you need to be calling on the Father, Yeshua HaMashiach, Ahaya, our great God, Ahaya, Ahaya. We need to be understanding he's the only one who can save us. Hallelujah. It's not this white Jesus. It's not the Roman Catholic Church. It's not the Pope of Rome. It's not none of these people who are bowing down to Baal, who's worshiping fake pagan sun gods. Gods, who make who worship in taboo's birthday who 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 honor in all these things but the right king the true king the rightful king who deserves to be worshiped we need to know we need to come out of babylon people hallelujah hallelujah how long can we preach this we need to sound the trumpet and come out of babylon come out of these false pagan hinduism buddhism catholicism atheism uh satanism uh, all this mysticism all this new age life Liars, uh, all these things, false. Oh, just be positive. Just be positive. Just be positive. Oh, this is just going to mess you up. Mess your mind up. You need to be giving your life to Messiah Yeshua. Coming out of Islam. Coming out of all these false gods. False devils. False deceivers. You know, somebody told me the other day, well, you know, we don't have to worship. All of us have different religions. All, all the religions, it doesn't really matter what religion. It doesn't really matter. It does matter. We have one God, one salvation, one uh, uh, baptism in the Messiah, Yeshua, HaMashiach. We need to understand the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob people. Come out of her. Come out of astrology. Come out of all these things, people. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them. Come out of them. How much more can I say it? And so he says here, I'm going to read it again, but we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Are you letting your sin take you away? Are you letting your lies take you away? Are you letting all these deceivable things take you away? We need to be repentant today, people. Repentant to the Father. Repentant to uh, Yeshua HaMashiach. Repentant to Yasha, Yeshua. I am a sinner. I need you, Father, in my life. Cleanse me up. Clean me up. Oh, yes, indeed. We need this today, people. And there is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself up to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. So if you want Want God to see if you want to have visions and dreams, if you want to have uh, revelations like uh, Carrie Gidden and revelations like Leland and revelations like others and revelations like myself and revelations like other people you heard about, you need to be coming out of this sin in your life, people. You need to repent before Yeshua and uh, recognize that you are a sinner and that He said that we have to be born again, born again, okay, born again, coming out of Adam seed into his seed coming out of Adam's seed into his seed where he can fill you up with his holy presence where he can change you and make you white as snow hallelujah 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 but now oh lord you are our father we are the clay and you are the porter and all we are the work of your hand and and all we are the work of your hand hallelujah he made all living things all creations all races all tribes people do not be furious O lord now remember iniquity forever indeed please look we are all oh, let's see it there i just said it father hallelujah we all are your people we all are your people hallelujah 
He made everybody with eyes, ears, teeth, gum, liver, spleen, your whole body. He made the whole human races, the whole human races, people. So we need to be coming out of her, coming out of all these false gods, false gods and pagan gods, coming out of these things, coming out now, people. Time is running out. Time is running out. Your holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem, a des desolation. Our holy and beautiful temple temple where our fathers praise you is burned up with fire and all our present pleasant things are laid waste and that's what's going to happen all everything that can be shaken will be shaken he's going to get rid of all these things he's going to get rid of all these things people you need to be holding on to him like the people sung the song from the beginning hold on him holding on his hand holding on to the father it's all about holding on to him now people giving up these gods of this world giving up this world he said we are in the world but not of the world we need to be coming out of this world and clinging on to the heavenly things heavenly things people heavenly things things. So it says here, will you restrain yourself because of these things? O Lord, will you hold your peace and afflict us very severely? Well, yes, yes, yes. If you don't do the right thing, yes, 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 he is. Okay. So I'm going to go now because the t video's rolling here. I'm already uh, over uh, 11 minutes uh, of an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, clear this up and go over to, um, uh, the last thing here, uh, may or not the Lord is coming. I was going to share this today. We have a snow causing massive closures here in Colorado. It's snow coming in. It's cold here today. That's why I got my hoodie on. So, but we need to be praying for one another in these, uh, uh, the season as people are traveling and stuff of that nature. But let's go ahead and listen to, uh, the counterfeit sanctification, uh, coming from, make sure that's the right one. Hold on. Let me see if. Page 23, August 11, August 11, I'm sorry. August 11 is what I need to have here. August 11, I didn't think that was right. In harmony with, in harmony with his law, in harmony with his law, hallelujah. So let's go ahead and mute that out and play this and I will end and let you guys go. Uh, wow, it's so much going on. August 11, in harmony with his law, give me understanding and I shall keep thy law, yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Psalm 119, 34, in the new birth the heart is brought into harmony with God, as it is brought into accord with his law. When this mighty change has taken place in the sinner, he has passed from death unto life, from sin unto holiness, from transgression and rebellion to obedience and loyalty. Erroneous theories of sanctification springing from neglect or rejection of the divine law have a prominent place in the religious movements of the day. These theories are both false in doctrine and dangerous in practical results, and the fact that they are so generally finding favor renders it doubly essential that all have a clear understanding of what the scriptures teach upon this point. True sanctification is a Bible doctrine. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Thessalonian church declares, This is the will of God, even your sanctification. And he prays, The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 and 5.23 The Bible clearly teaches what sanctification is and how it is to be attained. The Savior prayed for his disciples, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. John 17, 17, and 19. And Paul teaches that believers are to be sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Romans 15, 16. What is the work of the Holy Spirit? Jesus told his disciples, When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. John 16, 13. And the psalmist says, Thy law is the truth. By the word and the spirit of God are open to men the great principles of righteousness embodied in his law. And since the law of God is holy and just and good, a transcript of the divine perfection, it follows that a character formed by obedience to that law will be holy. Christ is a perfect example of such a character. He says, I have kept my father's commandments. 
I do always those things that please him, John 15:10 and 8:29. The followers of Christ are to become like him by the grace of God to form characters in harmony with the principles of his holy law. This is Bible sanctification. This work can be accomplished only through faith in Christ by the power of the indwelling Spirit of God. Okay, people, I'm going to let you guys go. I really appreciate you having patience with me. Uh, probably the longest video I ever did here today. But uh, it's really important that we know we need to support one another, help one another uh, in these uh, fields out there. So we really appreciate all the offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in the mission fields. So uh, we really appreciate it. You can send your offerings to monitor.camway at gmail.com at PayPal. Uh, donations, mail, fill my cup. Uh, ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. So we really thank you for watching. Father, be with the people watching today. Help them, Father, to make decisions to salvation, knowing that time is running out. We really appreciate all the messengers coming from your prophetess and prophets and messengers and watchmen. Uh, we appreciate you, Father, for being our sal being our holy God, our holy God, Father. We just ask that you be with the people. Uh, we ask that you supply all the people needs according to your riches and glory, whether it's physical, mentally, spiritually. Uh, we really appreciate you so much, Father, for being our wonderful Savior. So we ask that you uh, come quickly, come quickly. Uh, we bind Satan and all his evil angels below beyond beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to fall out on your people, your living creations, and helping them to follow you, to follow you, to follow you only, to come out of the world, Father, come out of this world, this evil world, and to uh, hold on to heavenly things, Father, and to know that you are coming soon. So we thank you for your love for us, your blessings. We ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And I'm going to go now. People, it's been a uh, uh, it's a pretty long, a little over a long hour this time. I'm sorry about that. But uh, just thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Uh, watch, keep watching Israel. Please watch in Israel. I will put some other news links in the description box. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. And I'll see you again on another video as soon as I can. Shalom, shalom. Love you guys so much. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.